Purpose is the fuel for your life. It's what gives your life meaning in, in many, many ways. Here's a few other solutions and things that really give your life more meaning and can help you live out your purpose. Number one is life value. It's really important to know that you are valuable, you are worthy, and you're significant. If you don't believe that you're worthy or valuable, if you don't believe you're valuable, then you can't give value to others. So it's important that you recognize that you're made in the image of God, that you were created. Listen, there's no one like you in the world. There's not a single person like you. And God has given you a unique gift, and you need to think about how you can use that to serve the world. But if you don't see yourself as being valuable, then what I would recommend you do is spend some time reading books that help instill that in you, being around a community of support that l allows you to know that. For me, you know, I, I read what God says about me in Scripture, and that has taken my worthiness and value to the whole nother level. But that's number one. If you don't believe you're valuable, you cannot add value to others. You cannot give what you don't have. Number two, principled living is the way to live a life of purpose. Life principles and philosophies guide your decisions and life path. And so, and by the way, I see a lot of people not living out principles. So, so what tends to happen in the world today is we're living in a state of what's called relativism, where people believe almost everything is true all at once. But, there, but, but if you believe everything is okay, then, then it's hard to just d determine, well, what's actually good and what's actually bad? What's, it's, it, it's hard to determine that. You always wanna be moving the world towards the good, Towards it's actually called uh, human flourishing. That's what you want to lead the world towards. So principle living, for instance, I have life principles. No matter who it is, no matter what they've done, I need to treat that person with honor and respect. That's a life principle, okay? Uh, another life principle is, is that all life is precious. All life is precious, right? Um, and, and so uh, th those are just examples of life principles. Another one is like live on less than you make. That's like a Dave Ramsey principle. It's a good financial principle. Another one is always be generous, sowing into other people, your family, your non-family, the person that you're tipping at the restaurant, you know, so sowing and reaping. There's another life principle. Be the change you want to see in the world. Stop pointing fingers and judging everybody and live by the principle to where don't judge anybody, just go out there and you be the change in the world right? So principled living brings your life purpose. Because if you don't have any principles of which you live, live by, you don't know what's good or bad, or you don't know what's right or wrong. So you don't know how to be a good mom or a good dad or a good boss or a good leader or whatever it might be. So you got to be principled, principled person. Number three, goals and achievement, right? When you achieve your goals, you feel satisfied and, and that helps you fulfill your purpose. And so what you want to do is have a purpose, but then be able to attach goals to it. I'll give you an example for myself. And so when I started, uh, you know, my supplement company, um, we attach financial goals to it. We attach goals of number of lives transformed of people like for, for when I did courses, that's another one, but you want to have specific goals that you're going after. Number four, excitement. Here's the thing, your purpose, it should be exciting. There should be a sense of curiosity and wonder and it should excite you. Okay. So if you, if you, you'll know your purpose because it'll be something you start to feel passionate about and love, but it should be exciting. Number five, growth. Your purpose should allow you to progress in your life, to be to where you are becoming a be bigger, better person. You're growing in character, you're growing in your skill, you're contributing more, but there should be a, a, a an element of growth. Number six is community and connection. Your purpose, it typically is not something you're doing absolutely alone solo. You should have a family or a tribe that has your back that you're going and bringing along with you. Like even in my work life, by the way, I'm excited. I have a three-year-old right now, but I'm so excited for when she's, 19 or 20 and she's ready to kind of come into work with me and us, you know, doing the family, family, family business together. So anyways, community and connection and a team of people you're locking arm with to change the world with. That's important. Number seven, contribution and impact. You know, you're doing something that feels meaningful. Number eight, it's bigger than you. Your purpose should ideally bigger, be bigger than you. I mean, part of my purpose is helping people, all people like, like the ideal for me is we get to a place where Every person alive is fulfilling their their God given purpose. They're they're optimal in their health. They are you know absolutely free of disease. Every hospital is shut down because because we don't need them because people are eating so well. People are exercising. People are you know li living out their best life. They're gardening. And so that now will that vision come to pass while I'm alive? Probably not. It's way bigger than me. Way bigger than something I could ever accomplish. 
right? But that's the ideal. That's what you want to have. You know, there's a there, there's a great tagline for um, uh, for one of my favorite charities, and it, it is um, make uh, um, you know make po- poverty non-existent, right? Well, there are so many people in poverty right now, but that's that that that's a big that's a big why. You know, so the bigger the why, the better. It's kind of like if you've ever read Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, big, hairy, audacious goals. You should have a big, hairy, audacious purpose and vision for your life that then allows you to determine what that goal should be in the first place. Now, here's the other reality and the thing I want to share again. You don't need a big platform to make a difference. Whether you have 1 million followers on social media, or you have one follower on social media, you just need to use your skills to serve, to love, to lead, to teach, to create and innovate in just one of those things within your family and your community. I mean, think about the mother of Martin Luther King Jr. If she wasn't a great mom, he would not have led the civil rights movement. Now think about the mother of Hitler, or dad of Hitler, to, to, to my point as well. If they, I mean, obviously, if, if he was nurtured and challenged in the right way, he wouldn't have done what he did. And so all that being said, even if you just impact one person or one small group, your family, that's how you change the world. And that enough is such a massive purpose. This is something I tell moms constantly, and, and I share with Chelsea constantly. It's like, you've got the most important job in the world. There's no bigger, better purpose than going out there and saying, I'm going to love and help transform my family and help my kids grow to be the best people they can be. It's so, so powerful. And I want to share this. As you continually become a person you are proud to be and live with purpose, your actions will have ripple effects on your legacy and their legacy and beyond. And I want to show you a graphic here if you're watching on YouTube. And then I'm going to explain if you're listening on iTunes and Spotify and some of the other, other channels here. But this is called Maslow's Hierarchy. And it's a great example if you're wondering, well, how do I help somebody? And you want to find some problems in the world that you can help solve. There are six levels of uh, of Maslow's hierarchy. And he was a really famous and brilliant psychologist, Abraham Maslow. And so here are the six levels. The first one is physiological. Okay, so so these are our, it's, it's a, the hierarchy of needs. Here's the things that we need in order to thrive uh, as human beings. Um, water food, sleep, shelter, you know, clothing, health. If you don't have those things, you're, you're going to die, right? If you don't have water, you're going to die. If you don't have food, you're going to die. If you don't sleep a single hour, you can't live. Okay. So all that being said, the first needs are physiological. Well, one thing of purpose might be, well, helping people who don't have water, don't have food, don't have shelter, don't have clothing, don't have health. Those are the very basic things. And so part of your purpose could be helping people on the foundational level. That could be your purpose is solving problems in those areas. The level up from that physiological needs are our needs for safety. It's bodily safety. You know, I think about there's a ministry that Chelsea and I and friends of ours have sewed into called Mercy Multiplied, where, where they took in women who had been sexually abused. Or there's another group that that we love that Chelsea and I love to sew into, and and, and they rescue women for, from sex trafficking. Safety, right? That That's safety, that's security. It's rescuing people that are uh, being imprisoned in that way. Um and so we need safety in our bodies, our physical bodies. We need to feel safe within our families and relationships. Safety of employment. You know, if somebody doesn't have a job, um, there, there's a real security issue around that, um, not being provided for. Uh, safety in morality and even, even your physical property you know, that you own, your home. Right, you want to feel safe there, and so if somebody doesn't feel safe in any of those areas, so think about that. If you owned a company that that put alarms on homes, that's really purpose driven. I mean, you're taking care of one of those levels of of Maslow's hierarchy. If you're a real estate agent and you're out there helping somebody find their dream home, that's actually several levels we'll get into. But 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 you know, you need to attach a lot of meaning to your job. The next level up is love and belonging, feeling included. And this is where family and friendship and even sexual intimacy come into play to where you have to know you belong. There there is a human need. Uh, You know, one of the, I've mentioned this study before, but if you feel lonely in a sense of, I'm not talking about you feel lonely for one day, but if you chronically feel lonely, it's the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day, according to the studies. 
That's mind blowing. Think about that. That's how bad it is for your health. So it could take decades off your life feeling lonely. So we have to be connected to other people. Could be a family. And let's think it could be a family. It could be a, you know, a, uh, and, and maybe you're grown and single and maybe you, you don't, didn't have a family. Well, you, do your best to create that family environment. It's friendships as well. Um, so love and belonging is critical to our mental needs and well-being. And another one, the next level up is esteem. In order for you to thrive and be living out your purpose, you need to have a strong sense of self-worth. You need to have a sense of accomplishment, respect, and recognition. And so if you don't feel like you're respected by anybody, that really hurts your self-esteem. If you don't feel a sense of value and self-worth, now these things, of course, are very tied to identity. If you have a weak sense of identity in who you are, well, that affects your purpose. Actually, that, that's the first thing that will weaken your purpose is if you don't have a strong sense of identity. Um, and so that's important. And so listen, if you're a person out there and you're helping, uh, let me give you an example. On Instagram, one of the things that I see most people doing that are young women is they're posting pictures that are probably going to make other women feel bad about themselves because they're posting a picture of a perfect life and maybe a picture of them puckering up or, you know, body parts or whatever it is. And so, and the studies have shown that, you know, uh, high school girls that are spending time on social media, their self-esteem is dramatically lessened. Well, let's say you want to be a purpose-driven person and you know those girls have a low sense of self-worth. Why don't you start an Instagram or a Facebook or a YouTube or whatever social account to where then you can go on and you help women build their self-esteem and their self-worth and let them know they're called to do great things with their life and that men should be laying down their lives for them because they're that valuable, because they're worth dying for right? So again, you can see where you can start to find your purpose in Maslow's hierarchy here. The next level up is self-actualization. Uh, we need to become more virtuous. That allows us to be happy. That allows us to be thrive. So us virtues are becoming more loving and more wise and more generous and more kind and more hopeful, those sort of qualities. It's contribute. It, it's self-actualization is where you're contributing a lot to the lives of others. It's personal growth and self-development. It's reaching your full potential by using your gifts for the good of the world. That's self-actualization. Now here's the highest level. Uh, and so if you're a life coach, or a, you know, or a pastor or a rabbi or a priest or a teacher or a, you know, a, a lot of, you know, you, you oftentimes are helping people grow in their character, grow in their personal growth, reach their full potential. If you're a coach, coaching somebody, helping them do that. So that's a very high level that, that you're operating under. And none are better than the others. In fact, the lower, the more foundational, but we need all of these for us to be fulfilling and living out our purpose in life and helping others do the same. And the last is uh, self-transcendence. When you're living at the very highest level of purpose, it's it's divine. It's divine. You've tapped into. You have a divine identity. There's a level of spiritual growth that's happening in you. You're very purpose driven, and you're self sacrificing. You understand sacrificing yourself to love and give to others to make the world a better place. And so, if you're operating in more of that spiritual component, internal component, then you're operating at the highest level of Maslow's hierarchy, and you're and you're living out your greatest level of purpose in life. Hey, if you liked this, then watch my full episode right here.